Hello oh. and welcome once again to my channel AMZ TV here on YouTube. Thank you for coming back. As usual, I have all these wonderful guests. Some, you know, they're on your screen every day, some a blast from the past. This man I have here with me is both, okay? And if you're listening to me, um, this is uh, a Mesa Live podcast. So some of you are already looking at him and wondering, ah, they know that face. Yes, you do know the face because it doesn't grow old. I, before the interview, I was like, why don't you grow old? I know him as Ahana, <laughs> Rattlesnake. <laughs> Please welcome Francis Duru, my brother. How are you? <laughs> How are you? I'm so fine. The amazing are uh, amazing. It's nice seeing you again, you know. Uh, you're, you're accusing me and say I know the old. You said you don't old. <laughs> we did try. We give God thanks. Um, <laughs> we give God. We give God the thanks, the glory, thanks. the praise. We give him all. Yes. Um, again, um, for those of you That's who know right. Francis Duru, um, he was very, very back in the early 90s. It wasn't his first movie, but the movie that made him a household name, in my opinion, you can correct me, was Rattlesnake by the late Amaka Igwe. And you owned that role, Ahana. I mean, you carried us. We all cried with you. We were angry. You know, when you were angry, we were angry. You know, it was, it was it, for those of you who haven't seen it, try and, you know, watch the movie. But, you know, one thing I had wanted um, and I was discussing this with you before, and I know people probably would attack me for this, but whatever, I'm still going to say my piece. I wish you had continued the role to the end because you played a section of a younger Ahana. So what's your take on that? That's just me. Yeah. You know. Well, I, I, I had expected that too because for me, I want to say I was robbed of an opportunity to finish what I started especially in the minds of the people. But again, it's a work of art, you know. Uh, he who pays the piper dictates the tune. Uh, more or less, I didn't have so much to like do when that opportunity came. And till today, so many people see me and they always feel bad at that point in time that why didn't you continue? And for us as artists, we naturally have all it takes to do that. The combination with Jilos Ago, who played Peter, was worthwhile and... Uh, for me to say it has been a wonderful time because it has remained a movie that has taken my name. Yeah. Uh, before my late mom died, that was, uh, yeah, yeah, from months before the lockdown, uh, people mm -hmm. used to call her Mama Hannah no oh, longer, you know. So, so it has come to stay and it speaks to what, you know, in depth characterization, believability making people cry with you when you're crying, making people laugh with you when you're laughing. And that's what we're supposed to do as actors. Just give me the best shot. So for me, fine, but the, the coloration is still there. Oh, it was, yes, it definitely made your household name and that was just voice in my opinion. And I'm so sorry to hear about your mom. You know, may she rest in peace. Yes. Oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks so much. Come in. So, um, yeah, you've been busy. You have been busy. One thing I do know, I know there have been so many other um, roles you have played. Do you want to share some of them with us that you like, some of your iconic roles, aside from Ahana? We, know, we love him as Ahana, but there have been other roles. Well, well let, 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 yeah, well, let me, yeah, let, let, let me take it from uh, the moment we got into Lagos, and that was actually part of the story of Ahana. Uh, it was a Lagos, but my very first movie which I did was The Missing Mask. Yes. And I cherish it a lot because one, I was a neophyte, just fresh from school, certificate in theater arts, an opportunity came for me to actually express myself. Now, the thing about the movie without children was, it was the first time I was getting into a movie that demands dialect, Igbo language. And it was not just any type of Igbo language. It was so principled and disciplined that it must be central Igbo. And we took it to the core and expressed at that level. So the missing mask where I played, it came remains one of my best. Oh. Then 
Rattlesnake came, the English movies came, but I did Dust Dust with Fred Amata. It was a fantastic one. Mm. Sergeant Okoro with some local Upper Williams. And um, we had uh, Eva with Izu Oju. Uh, oh, so many. Got, coming down later, there's another iconic one we did, the epic Akweke Nordum. It was about the folkloric uh, uh, tale of the, the hunter who went to rescue this princess who never liked him and despised him and followed a, a, more or less a ghost into the bush, <laughs> uh, believing that he was, she was going to be married off to a great mm -hmm. man at the end of the day. Yeah, so he went there to like uh, rescue the girl. Mm -hmm. Now, why? Because that, that movie cuts across. I remember that story. My grandmother told me the story. And when the opportunity came to play that role, it became one movie that actually cut across the East mm -hmm. and even to the English version. So mm -hmm. we've done a whole lot of that. We have uh, the, the best, I will tell you, that actually hits me after the Rattlesnake was a major overheat in a, a Total War, Final War, where I played a Liberian rebel who turned into a pastor. And at the end of the day, the girl he wanted to marry, he found out that he was the one who killed their father, killed their mother, and raped mm -hmm. the elder sister. Ooh. So that was Omotola Jalagi, yeah. Omotola Jalagi, which is Jumbo. So when the character, yeah, so when the character played by Omotola came down now to be presented his brother-in-law, who did she see? The same guy who butchered their father, butchered mm -hmm. their mother. Mm -hmm. So top at that level. Some great job. Well, all the roles have been so, so wonderful. Mm -hmm. you know, that's, I that's pick nice. those ones as one of my best. Yeah, uh, that's nice. And that's, those are, you know, Nollywood stories, they always pull at your heartstrings. You're going to cry. You're going to laugh, you know, and then you're going to get attached to those characters. Yeah, that is true. That is true. So since we're talking about... That's right. I want to juxtapose, combine, you know, combine, compare Nollywood then and Nollywood now. What are your, what have you seen? What would you desire? What are your, you know, your uh, comments? I just want to know what your take is. Well, I, I, I want to thank God that I, I have belonged to this to end. Yes. With so much confidence and authority. Yeah, and, and I'll say this with no, no, no regrets, no remorse, no apologies for anybody. Uh, I think the time we started was one of the best moments in my life. Yes, we were working for money, but money was not the real thing. Yes, we needed money. But those were uh, productions that were inspired by deep-seated passion that the artist brought it. When you did flesh and blood, there was a connect. Yeah. Even if the person who hated you watched it, the person had no choice but to connect. Yes. And that's the power of yes, and that's the power of the art. It, it takes away every inhibition and takes you to your normal natural impulse. Passion was the word. And you will agree with that message that that time there was just something about coming to location. It was a family thing. The day you're going to strike set, everybody is looking downcast because you're going to miss people. It was a lovely family thing, each one helping one, each one watching each other's back, and the passion thing, respect, discipline, respect for professional ethics and heritage. Mm -hmm. You rehearse, you take mm -hmm. your lines. Mm -hmm. Directors understood what they were doing. Nobody was so much in a hurry to do this job to go and do the other one. That was it. And that is why, till today, the artist that greeted that past remain evergreen. Mm. And each time they pop up, the audience is so quick to identify with them. It's not just because they were popular facially. It's simply because there was a psychological connect between them and their audience, which left a mark in the minds of the audience. 
Marlon Brando in one of his book, I think the Brando for Breakfast, he said something. He said, every movie must be a hallmark of nostalgia, which means I watch Sound of Music. I remember that. I watch Apachino. You know, it makes you want to go and look for it. I know how many times people have called me to ask me for rattlesnake. And I remember my dear sister, big friend Amaka Igwe of Blessed Memory. She gave me seven of those copies, DVD. I remember one woman who begged me. I said, okay, don't worry, ma. I will look for you anytime in Abuja here. Yeah. And the day she saw me, I took her number. I delivered that, you know, movie to her. The day my kids, I woke up one morning, they said they want rattlesnake. There was this joy in their faces as if, you know, I said, look at this one. <laughs> and I asked them why. They said because they have heard so much. Mm. So most of the people who actually talk about rattlesnake today are people who did not even watch it within that time. Mm. But they were told yeah. it speaks to one thing. Yeah. It speaks to the thoroughness with which we did our job professionally, spiritually, psychologically. It mm -hmm. was a calling for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Today, it's a different ball game. Mm. Today, it's all about the gloss. Mm. Today, it's all about the money making thing. Today, it's all about the hype. Today, it's all about followers on Instagram. Mm. Now, the, 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 I wouldn't say it's a disadvantage, but society evolves. That time, technology was not there for us. <laughs> but this time around, technology is there for us. Now, that time, the one thing this time I still not had is the passion. Why are people coming into the movies today? Vanity. Coloration that will make them help sell their brand. Oh. So pretty girls now, mothers can tell their daughter and actually walk their way out to make sure their daughters get a role. You never paid money to get your role in flesh and blood. Oh. There was an audition. You went for the audition. You brought pictures. They did table casting. At the end of the day, you sat down, you know, but today is a totally different thing. I tell you, without missing words, no remorse, no regrets, no apologies to any quarter. Today is a different ball game. People actually buy their way in different forms and terms. That the, the kind of things we may not want to say for this medium. But at the end of the day, that's the kind of society we are, we are experiencing. Quick fix. Uh, 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 microwaved processes okay, from the natural process they're supposed to go. So at the end of the day, the challenge you have is that, you know, their acts are not sustainable. Mm. I can still talk. I'm still doing movies today. Yeah. I'm still relevant today. And by God grace, when I meet the younger ones, they connect and they ask, what did you guys really do that has kept you guys relevant? It's the process we went through. It's the passion we expressed. Our impressions were more or less based on how much passion we had expressed into the process that you had no other choice but to like and buy it, identify with it, embrace it. So mm. that time and now are two different periods. Wow. But we are still relevant. And okay. we still try to take them to say, look, guys, we can do this. So if we, let's say we are the vanguards of what used to be. Because if you do not tell the person what it used to be, the person will not know. Mm -hmm. This is, I can see people come to location with their scripts on their phone. And they are, I say, what's this? How dirty <laughs> is your script? That's what tells me how... That's professional and actor, you are. How dirty yeah. is your script? <laughs> if I finish a job, my script is not dirty, man. Forget <laughs> it, it means I'm not trying. If I'm doing a job, 
I don't wake up 3 a.m. in the night jolted by <laughs> how do I fit that character I've yeah. not started. So, yeah. so that sense of professionalism over mm -hmm. the past, you know. Mm -hmm. And you will also agree with me that we work with the best, best. You cannot be on set with uh, 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 Joker Silva and you toy with that experience. You cannot be on set with an Olu Jacobs, you toy with it. Mm -hmm. You cannot be on set with uh, some local and you toy with it. So mm -hmm. somehow there was a level of impartation. They were doing some things, we were watching, saying some things, we were listening. Yeah. And we went about, when we went back home, those things were stored in our minds and they became more or less a template from where we did the things we were doing. Wow. So that's it. Yeah, thank you for that. And the one thing I like that you said is, you know, you've been there, you're still, you're here and you're still relevant and you're still going on. So no one can come after watching this and say, oh, he's just jealous of us because he doesn't get jobs. You are still very relevant. You are still earning awards. You're still being celebrated. And talking yes, about that, yes. you are very active in the humanitarian space. You know, I see that you've, um, you, you received the MACA awards, the MACA, the MACA awards, right? And then, um, and then uh, yeah. some of you also from the United Nations. Please quickly tell me how that came about. Well, for me, right from the first time I, I picked up this career as an actor, which I think is a, is a divine calling for me, mm -hmm. I realized one thing that first and foremost, you know, we are human beings first, before where we come from, before our creed, before our philosophical affiliations. And we are humans. And if we were created in the image of God, it means each and everyone around you is a God. So how do you respect God when you do not actually give respect to products of that God? Mm. So humanity to me remains sacred. So how do I feed humanity? And each one of us is half a pair of an angel. And you need the second pair to be complete. So I don't dwell in isolation. I need you for me to be complete. Mm. You need me for you to be complete. Kabat Esosa, in one of the movies he did, the twin that we did, in one line he said, one alone remains alone two together makes a whole. Mm -hmm. So humanity remains a whole when we come together, interface, interact, add value to each other. And anything that has to do with adding value to humanity, I stand for. Anything that, you know, fights against humanity, I am against. Mm -hmm. Anything that stands to make the world a better place, I will always identify with. On pro bono, money, or no money. And in the course of doing these things, people begin to look at it. You don't know who is watching. Right, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, I, I had family worship center in Abuja here for 20 years in the youth department. I have seen bad kids become gooder kids. Let me use the word gooder. I have seen worse children turn fine simply because we have not taught them, mentored them in the church and made them to understand that they have a bigger essence inside them than whatever has been their distraction. I've restored children to their parents, a son and the father who has not been speaking for 10 years and all that stuff. And you take the boy to their home, the father is watching what is happening. At the end of the day, you see them hug each other you see them shed tears, mother is shedding tears, father is shedding tears, and at the end of the day, they come one. That is a responsibility. I'm a father, I have two kids, uh, 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 two boys and one girl. My daughter just graduated. The other two are there. I am their mirror. Their destiny is in my hand, and I must shape it and mold it to the point that once they come out, they just run. If they do anything wrong in their community and society, I am responsible, not them, because I did not inculcate in them the right tools for them to live a right. So these are the aspects of humanity. 
in general, I stand for humanity. I stand to add value to anything that adds value to life. I think it has been the cause of all of these things, the Marker Award, UN Ambassador Award, um, Friends of the Little Big Soul, which is actually to raise awareness for uh, preterm babies, premature babies. I think myself, Ejika Sebu, uh, Two-Face Idibia, and Ngozi uh, Ezono, we have been prime ambassadors to the point that the World Premature Day were part and parcel of the group that established that today you have a World Premature Day. A cancer, different kinds of awareness, those are the things. And I think as an actor, as a medium of communication, as an influencer, as a change agent, these are the things I should be doing. It's a give back for me to those who actually made me to be who I am today. I cannot make myself king. If I'm a star, the fans make me the star. So they are the kingmakers. So what do I give them? How do I touch their lives? How do you those pay are the back? Things How do you pay forward? How do I pay back? Yeah, that's, that's, that's really great. Wow, kudos and uh, thank you. Thank you for giving back. That's wonderful. I'm going to piggyback off something you just said because you said you have a daughter. And it doesn't even, I know I keep saying that daughter. Well, because I think most of the time that what I'm about to talk about now happens to women, but it also happens to men. And that's sexual assault, rape. I did um, a video about that, about my own experience a long time ago. So I'm asking you, what is your thought on that? On, on rape? What, 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 tell me, give me your feedback. Yeah, yeah, without mincing words, you know, it, it, it's anti humanity. So, mm. naturally, I do not affirm it or, you know, agree to it in any form, whatever form. It is a no, 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 no right. for me. And I don't think it is right. You know, there are issues. People say, okay, you provoke. I say, no. The most important thing, what makes us human totally different from animals is that, you know, we must be able to, yeah, we must be able to tame, tame our excesses. We must have total control. Mm -hmm. There is a bestial element in man, but God has given man the power to tame it to nullity. Mm. And that's what I think, yes. So it is, it is wrong, it is out of place, it is uncalled for, it's a big no for me. Thank you so much for that. You have so succinctly hit the nail on the head. You know, God has given us the ability to be able to curtail whatever, because people argue that, you know, like, oh, uh, it must be what she was wearing. It must be that he was provoked. But then you've been given that will to be able to hold back. You're not, you're not an animal, you know? So that's, that's lovely. Thank you so much. So very quickly, like you said, I, I'm so affected by what you said about the youth. You're giving back. I really, really, that, that I appreciate a lot. For those watching you, like you said, people are still asking for rattlesnake that were not even present or born even when it was made. And they're now wanting to know, what is your advice for actors coming up? They see you and they're like, I want to be like this man. How can I be like it? What is your advice for those coming up that want to come into the industry? You know, I, 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 my mentor, Ugo Chuko Omogu, taught me one thing. He said, before you admire a man's success, first and foremost, make inquiries into the processes to his success. And I would say, before you say you want to be like this, before you say you want to be, somebody called me and said, I want to be an actor. I said, well, what do I do? I will tell you only the things I did and how I became an actor, isn't it? If I tell you something totally different, it's a lie. I say, well, I was an amateur actor from doing drama sketches. Gradually, I was fortunate to have gone into the university where my skills were honed. And for six years, I became a professional. It was the things I did from the time of being an amateur plus that six years that has been able to like put me on the podium and people have been able to see what I have to come for what I have. So what level of this do you want?
Mm. But the issue today is that you, don't, you want to shine. So in the normal parlance, you want to blow. I do not know how people blow. I'll tell you my own process. And I believe if you follow my own process, you will be bigger than me. Because greatness without process can never be sustained. Wow. It is your process. Yeah, it is your process that makes you stronger. You go back to the Bible. The great people, take Esther, for example. Look at her process to where she became. You cannot talk about Esther being the queen without looking at where she came from. So where she came from was like more or less the, 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 the melting pot that pushed her to be there. You go to Joseph, look at the trials they went through. You go to David, you go to all those Bible characters we read. Their processes are responsible to their height. So until your process is deep enough, your, 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 your greatness cannot be tall enough, hmm. which means process is key. Wow. You want to shine, find a process. You want to excel, what is your process? Can you be mentored? Can you be taught? Are you humble? Can you stoop down to conquer? When people give you advice, do you hear them or do you listen to them? Because most young men, you give them advice, they are hearing you, but they are not listening to you. The moment you finish, I leave that guy. And so they know one help person. But I've helped you by giving you the <laughs> but I've helped you by giving you the capsules you need. And so there's a quick to shine mentality. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know any other process other than the process I've gone. And that's why I am still relevant today. Mm -hmm. This is almost No, it's not freezing on me. <laughs> At least so far, the Wi-Fi held on till now. Oh, my goodness. Words of wisdom. Who knew? I didn't know Francis could talk like this. He does have a way of getting his points across. He does not waste time. And wow. And he tells you he's still relevant today. He is still relevant. So you can't come after watching this and say, oh, um, guess what? Um, he's just jealous because, you know, he, he doesn't get roles or he's not relevant. No, the man is telling you he's still relevant. He is still relevant. He's still working. He's working in movies. He's working on uh, um, TV series, on soap operas. And he's also very, very much contributing to the humanitarian aspect. He's really driven with that because he believes in giving back. Oh my goodness, Ahana. I'm blown away. I am so impressed. Because the Ahana I knew, um, I keep calling him Ahana. <laughs> Francis is kind of shy. But, well, that's, it's interesting to see this aspect of him, you know, really fired up. And for those of you trying to, who admires him or admires, you know, the glamour and the glitz and the lights and the shiny armor, you need to know there has to be a process, he says. And I agree because sometimes you have to pay your dues, you know. If not, you become a flash in the pan. Okay, for those of you who know what I mean, flash in the pan, it just is transient, it's very temporary, and then and then you, you don't have longevity, you know. So um interesting words. I'm so glad he was able to join me. I know the Wi-Fi is something he, you know we tinkled with at the uh, beginning of the um of the interview. He's probably trying to sign back, <laughs> but um I need to go. But anyway, it's been lovely. I'm going to have him back. I'm probably going to try and have a panel of some of these oldies, you know, good old oldies, you know, oldies and still relevant. They're still in the field because, again, they know professionalism. They know to be professional because when you are, it's very important. It's very important. And to love your craft. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So, again, you've been watching Ameza Live. 
Um, no, let me say that again. You have, <laughs> you have been listening to Amazing Life podcast. And if you're watching this, you have been watching AMZ TV. My name is Ameza. Please remember to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Ameza Superstar. I have a Facebook page. Please go ahead and like it. Your support means a lot to me. The Facebook page name is Ameza. And uh, remember to subscribe, share my videos. Please put it out there. And thank you so much for all your support. You're all being so great. I love you all. So until I come your way again, please be safe, be kind. And of course, be blessed. Take care and God bless. I'm about to check out. <laughs>